What's up, Jeff? What's up? Welcome. Welcome to my first uh, songwriting interview. <laughs> I get to be the first one? That's right, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I wanted to start our time together just like learning a bit about you, and then we can explore a song and decide if we want to share that with the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it's in progress. Good. You have five kids and you have time to write. So many kids. I do not have time to write. Then how do you, <laughs> when do you write? <laughs> so I will build in intentional time uh, to, to, to do it, but I am a slow songwriter. So some, some songwriters can bust out a song in a day or something like that. But I typically will write a song in about a month. So I'll get an idea going. I'll brainstorm a bunch of ideas and just jot a bunch of thoughts and words and stuff on a, on a page and then sit on it and come back to it a week or so later and then, and then kind of develop. And a lot of times my songs will get like 70% done. And then that last 30% actually takes the longest amount of time. Yeah. Um, so f kind of finishing out the song because I know what I want to say, but I just haven't been able to find the words yet to say exactly what I want to say or the right melody or the right way to make it fit. Um, and so that last little bit. So I would say most of the time it takes me at least a, a solid month. And, and most of that is because I have five children. And yeah. Music. Well, I mean, I commend you because and there are some people out there who say, you know, I don't have time to write. But listen... <laughs> If you don't have five kids, <laughs> if I can do it, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, you can. Okay, so let's let's unpack a little bit. So so you know, people get to know you a little bit. Who is this Jeff Gilliland, and how do you say your last name officially for the record? Yeah, Gilliland, like like an amusement park. Gilliland. It, <laughs> where does that come from? <laughs> I have no idea. I think it's I think it's Irish. I could have guessed Irish. I don't know if it's yeah. your like reddish hair. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not well, sure. Well, tell me a bit about you then. Uh, you know, where are you from? And sure. So songwriting-wise, so I, I have been in kind of the church world doing ministry, worship ministry, pastoring, things like that for about 14 years. And kind of along in that time, I just had a lot of songs that I had that I had written that weren't really... The goal was never to, to do something with them more than to just write songs for the church or for me and my own relationship with God. And so those songs kind of just sat undeveloped for a long time. I kind of had a, a catalog of songs that, that did. And then kind of a, a f about four years ago, I had a, a pretty incredible opportunity where somebody had um, really felt led to just uh, offer to kind of pay for me to be able to do professional recording of some of my songs. Wow. Um, and they knew me. They didn't, I, they honestly didn't even know the songs. So they just, they just knew me and trusted me and felt like that was something they were supposed to do. And so all of a sudden I had these songs that were kind of written all over the place, but I didn't have a cohesive sense of like what I wanted them to sound like. I just mm -hmm. kind of had the songs. And so I had the opportunity to go to Nashville and work with Galen Crew. And he really helped me kind of begin to explore and identify what I could sound like. And so we released an EP in 2019. That was your first official released music. Yeah. 2019. Yep. Yep. So Jeez. I had been writing for a long time, yeah. but never had actually released anything. And even back in college, I played in bands and things like that, but we never really formally yeah. released anything. It's so refined. So, by the way, I'll just chime in. You know, I could have waited a little bit longer to release my first thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was 18 when I released. Well, no, I was younger than that, actually. There were EPs before. And people still have them to my um, terror. Awesome. But, you know, there's a thing. You can wait a while and refine something before you release it. So you're an example of that. <laughs> and I don't know if that was good or not. I think I tend to be too much of a perfectionist. And so I uh, can wait too long to push something along instead of, I think there's, you learn a lot from finishing a project. So the one that you recorded, and I'll link these because this, these records are beautiful. The, the 2019 one, is that the one with the wind or the Lord is my shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd is okay, on. Okay, yeah. that's that first one. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's more full band and full arrangement stuff. And then the second EP that we did was all just 
acoustics, ukuleles, and a string quartet kind of thing that we did. They're both gorgeous. Oh, thanks. And Galen produced them both. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. My gosh. Yeah, and he's brilliant. He, he was somebody that was really able to take bare bones of, this is what, having a producer is a big deal. And I, and I think I kind of knew that because I dabbled in it. But I always knew the songs were good, but whenever I would try to record it myself or do something, it just it didn't land or hit the way that I wanted it to, to land or hit. And all of a sudden I brought it to him and he would have ideas about how to make the whole thing connect that I just couldn't see. And, uh, yeah, so he was brilliant. He plays a lot of instruments too or? He does, yeah. yeah did you he bring does. in a bunch of session people? We brought in, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so on the first record we had a session uh, drummer play and we had um, Jasper Nephew do the electric guitar. So he plays electric for like Owl City and, and people. So that was really cool to like send him tracks and have that stuff come back because it was just cool to see what he would um, come up with. Um, and then um, Gideon Klein did the strings for both records. But on the second record, he did every single string part. So he wrote arrangements and we kind of interacted a little bit on on how to develop those but then but he plays every single string instrument from Nashville upright bass. bass from upright yeah 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 from so from upright bass through violins so cello viola violin he would just kind of pick he we arranged it and then we would just track them one at a time Jeez. yeah it was amazing to watch that i was so listening to your stuff this morning i was like why don't i have strings in any of my songs <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's good you need that quality of <clears throat> caliber of player though strings isn't one of those things you can just no pick up a high school student and have them play or something unless they were like really killer yeah they're gorgeous and i mean gosh what can i say about these records i just felt myself being so drawn in to like the presence of god and but in a unique way that didn't feel like maybe the typical you know worship music sound there was an intimacy there and that's something that i think that you bring there's a place for you know, the big anthemic Bethel and uh, Elevation. But I'm I'm super drawn to that more intimate stuff. And even lyrically, I, I, I can see why it takes you a month or, or so to write a song because you're so thoughtful in what you're trying to say. And, and you say, you either choose to say something really simply or you say it really uniquely. Mm. And I, I've I've heard you do both of those things, you know, in these songs, and I'm just I'm captivated by them. And I'd love to hear like, when did you start writing, and like, what got you into that? Because for me, when I look back, my older brother was was just writing rap songs. Yeah, and I was like, oh, you can do that. Like, you're allowed to write songs. And so, how did you get into writing? I think girls. Nice. <laughs> I think I, I I think uh there there was just something cool about being able to write so when I was in high school or whatever there was just something the idea of being able to write something that somebody else would look to and value um and hear my heart in I think was really attractive to me. Mm. Um so that coupled with girls. Yeah. Um would be would be it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That, that's it. So, because so, I, I was in lots of bands, kind of before before I started doing worship stuff. Who were um, those early inspirations then? In? Like, either for girls or otherwise. <laughs> like, like uh, musically. Musically, yeah. yeah. I'd say my my strongest are uh, like I grew up kind of in the in the emo scene, the emo indie kind of mm -hmm. scene. So, especially artists like Dashboard Confessional and Copeland are probably my biggest. In influencers, those those two probably probably did it the most. And I was into a lot of other stuff, but from a songwriting standpoint, um, I just ate that stuff up, man, and saw the way that they were able to like c combine um, emotion with deep lyrics and like all these melodies that were just captivating mm. and engaging. And I wanted to do that same thing. Those those emo vibes, you don't get a lot of like worship music inspired by that so then how do how do you transition like the probably overly like cryptic and poetic like styles of copeland and dashboard how do you dovetail that into writing songs of devotion yeah <laughs> sure so for for me it was you know i 
Well, first of all, almost all my songs, if you listen to them, there's usually there's there's some kind of scripture passage that it's kind of rooted in or 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 coming out of. Yeah. And so for me, it was a matter of like, hey, I know that there is there is power in that place. If you're writing from scripture, you don't have to do a lot to it to make it mean something. But I wanted to take that in its simplicity and at the same time turn it into something that I could say in a in a meaningful way. And then not just that I could say, but everybody, every everyone could say. And and it's hard because you're constantly battling, okay, is this cliche? Is what I'm saying gonna sound something just like we've said a hundred times? So how do I say it in a way that that my heart wants to say it afresh and anew in, yeah. in a way that's more challenging to me or or more thoughtful or Something like that. So I and I just hang there until I figure it out. So out of like high school, listening to these bands, then you you're writing. You're starting to write in high school, mm-hmm. and then you go to college. What was your musical experience in college? Like, what did you do to keep it going? Man, that's that's interesting. So I yeah. So I was in a couple. I was in a couple bands. I was in a band called Blackout Rescue, and I was in a band called This Brilliant City. Mm-hmm. And both were me really exploring faith ideas, but more in an emo rock band kind of style. I actually we only played a couple shows, and it's funny. Like for me, like I love my heart is in the songwriting part of it, not necessarily in the performing part yeah. of it. So like, honestly, I kind of just got my jollies on the getting together with a band and hanging out and yeah. re- working on songs. So like my memories of it, like not a whole lot of people got to see what we did. We probably, I think it with this brilliant city, we probably played like three or four shows and then we're called it a day. So then if we uh, dig these up on pure volume or MySpace, we'll I don't <laughs> think they're anywhere. I think, I think you can probably hear like a, I think there's one out there of like a Musica show that we did okay. with this brilliant city. And that one's, that one's fun to watch. There's an archive out there of all of my bad performances. There you that, go. You know, slightly against my will. <laughs> you learn from them. Yeah, man. Okay, so then after college, did you get a job in ministry like pretty quick? Yeah, I worked in. I worked with YWAM for a little bit. Oh. With youth with a mission. I didn't um, know you were a YWAMer. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I, I got a youth ministry job, and then a few years later, an associate pastor position, and I've and and. And an, another associate pastor position, but I've kind of always like had a hand in the pastoral world, but also a hand in kind of the worship space and music and things like that. So I know that you have done quite a bit of co-writing. In fact, uh, Jeff and I have co-written a song with a good friend of ours, Ryan, and that song will probably come out in the next year. Or so oh, I hope so. Uh, I hope so too. And um, so a little little about my experience writing with Jeff, and then I want to hear kind of his journey in co-writing. When we got together for this write, Jeff played such an important role in the writing process where me and our friend Ryan were, we were just riffing. We were just like, we were just throwing out melodies and lyrics and, you know, trying to get like stuff on the paper. And, you know, Jeff wouldn't let us get away with anything in the sense that like he was the sniper rifle, like saying like, ah, that idea is not quite concise enough or... The role that Jeff played in the right, it was a crucial role because we needed someone to kind of rein us in and and help us determine what which ideas were good. You were helping bring it all together, which very much aligns with your songwriting style, right? Yeah. You thoughtfully process ideas and only the best ones yeah. get into the song. Whereas, you know, I might write 10 bad songs and then write one good one in, in the span of like two weeks. And... With co-writing, is that typically the role that you play? Or? Yeah, which isn't super fun because because <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to nobody wants to be the guardrails guy. You know what I mean? It's like uh, like you want to in co-writing. I, I've found that I'm not the best co-writer be- because of this because I, mm-hmm. I really have a, a a vision for concept and the song is a whole. And once we're in agreement, kind of on where that's headed, I begin to immediately set guardrails or, or want it to be the best that it can be or want it to flow a certain direction. So I work really well with people who are content writers and who are melody writers because they can keep it flowing and keep that, they can keep that river kind of flowing. And then I'm kind of directing 
mm-hmm. I can help set guardrails for the for 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 the river um, to kind of flow the right way. So I've found that I often function like that and and try. But co-writing is supposed to work a lot like like if you ever hear somebody talk about improv and acting, you're supposed to kind of do like a yes and like yeah, you're not yeah. supposed to shut a lot down. Um, so I've had to learn to kind of in co-writes how to both in, empower and keep ideas flowing because they're yeah. it's not about shutting down ideas. It's about getting to the best idea. Yeah. And so how it's been to so what I've had to learn is how to like draw that out of people and contribute a little bit myself and at the same time be OK being that guardrails person because I know. The songs that I've done that for have come out really good at the at the end. So I've kind of learned like, okay, it's worth it to get through some of the more challenging conversation to get there. It is worth it, yeah. And I mean, if it were up to me, I would print everything I write, and and it's not all good. It, so I felt really like what you were bringing was was valuable to the process, and, and I didn't feel like you were shutting down ideas. I felt the 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 healthy guardrails. Oh, good. That means I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because I agree with you, the yes and thing. I harp on that all the time. Like, yeah. you can't write with someone who's just a no person. Yep. You know, the song won't get written. You'll everyone will feel bad about themselves at the end, yeah. and that co-write won't happen again. Yeah, I felt like you were not only contributing ideas yourself, but keeping us on target. Extremely valuable. I would write with you again anytime, and. So, like, I wanted to ask about those two records you have out currently. Were any of those co-writes? On, on the first record, none of them were co-writes. Wow. On the, on the second album, two of the songs had input from other people. So True Vine, I co-wrote with Ryan Hall. And then Your Ways Are Higher, we kind of had a group of a few of us. Ryan and Monica Jarvis and Ryan Hall were kind of all together. And we kind of came up with... We knew the scripture we wanted to work. Like I brought the scripture and like the idea, and we kind of just worked together to develop it. So they knew it was going to be my project, but they. So I kind of had a heavier start on what we were kind of bringing to the table, and they kind of added to it or brought yeah. that. So those two songs were co-writes on that one. Yeah, that's cool. You know, most of the rights, most of the rights I've been a part of have been just kind of like sit down, write a song. But it either gets shelved or, Me too. you know, <laughs> yeah, like it doesn't get used. But I, I have wondered recently if like one of my next records should be like every song is a co-write and every write I sit down with the hope that it goes, that it's going to go on my record. Because you, you do reach this thing in co-writing where if there's no end goal or even consequence to the write, it's a good exercise, but like there's no velocity to it. And so nobody, like, ends up taking responsibility for an I- the idea. Yeah. And therefore, nobody cares if the song is good. So I think, I don't know, I'm just kind of throwing this idea out into the ether. Like, committing to a co-write for a song that's going to go on a record, to me, feels like the next step for me. That's cool. You know? I, I think it just, need, for, <clears throat> for me, the hard part about co-writing is the way that my best work, for, for if in my opinion... My best work lyrically and melody wise doesn't come in right in front of people in a co write session. Yes. So, like, the good things that come is the people that can provide that content and melody ideas and vibey kind of stuff, like that kind of stuff. I thrive on that in co writes. Like, I need that input from other people. But then, but then I need space and yeah. time sometimes to say, okay, now we've got an idea. Let me think about this for like, 18 days and then let's kind of come, back come, back. To, come back to it because then it's like stewed and the ideas and the melodies like are there and then bringing it back. And I think too many times co-writes have looked, have been too locked in to needing to look a certain way. I actually found that I co-write better on zoom be, because like with, if, especially if it's in a group of, of three or four people, because I can literally just hit mute and like try something out without uh-huh. worrying about what they're thinking or what other people are whatever and then if i've got something i can come back i can share it yeah there is a real emphasis you know in places like nashville especially on co-writing and i think we would all agree that some of the best songs ever written were co-written and yet for people like you and i i i think that writing music is such a survival mechanism at least for me i would just wither up and die <laughs> if i couldn't write and so therefore like writing songs on my own 
is so life giving to me yeah. because it's my journal. Yeah. It's my like lament. It's my joy. It's my anything I have to say about life in the world. You know, happens in writing songs, and I do get the emphasis on co-writing because I think that we are better. You know, with other people, and not everybody's good at everything. Even though right. good songwriters try to be good at everything, you should try to be good at everything. But the, the truth is, like, man, it really helps a song if you if somebody is good at something that you're not, and you can leverage that. It 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 it's the best of both worlds. Yeah, but yeah, it's like the the personal aspect of songwriting is so. Mm. For me, it's yeah, it's it'll never go away. I will always write songs on my own to some degree, and maybe, maybe I do need to bring people in in the later part of writing songs. But then sometimes it's harder because you're attached to how it's feeling. Sure. So when when you brought those songs to Ryan, Ryan, and Monica, were they close to being done? No. So yeah. So uh, yeah. So when we wrote Your Ways Are Higher, we kind of just had the the scripture that we wanted to use, and I had a bunch of like notes um, and things that I had scribbled out. But so that one actually probably more than any of my other songs was a was a co-write. It's a proper co-write. Yeah. yeah. But what happened though was like we kind of got a start and we got a melody for the chorus, and we kind of had an idea for the vibe of the verses, mm-hmm. and then I took it. And completely reworked the verses okay. and put a whole different spin on it and sent it to them and was like, what if we did the chorus like we said, but the verses were like this? Right. And they were like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Like, it just came out really good. So, but that's the only, it never works that way for me. That's the only one I've had success on that way. True Vine that I wrote with Ryan Hall, I had a bunch of that already kind of together, like, lyrically. Okay. And so it was more about just, like, the lyrics were there and we were just kind of putting uh, melody and vibe to it. And that, that was totally, we both worked together on that one. That one was for sure a co-write. Are you working on anything right now? What's next? Yeah, so uh, so I am, but I'm, I'm trying something different. And so it is in the stage where I have some songs, but I really need input from other, other people. Um, so I'm feeling much like I, I was when I first came to the first record and I needed Galen Crew to kind of take those songs and give it some, hey, this is what this should maybe sound like. Mm. Um, so um, instead of both the, the records that I've done, both the EPs that I did were, were worship records that were maybe one step removed from Sunday morning. That's how I would kind of explain it, um, right? So they definitely were very, yeah, they were worship records. I wanted to write some songs that were more kind of the the ways of God hidden in relationship songs. Mm. Um, and really for the, the purpose of, like it's been cool to see the other records go out and realize that other people are listening and really hearing the heart of it and getting it. So when I get feedback from people about the way it's impacted them, that means a lot. But I also really believe that there's like ways that God has called us to operate with each other and in relationship that are really powerful. I'm like, I want to, I want to get into that space of relationships, but then like sprinkle wisdom in yeah, so that it's more of like, Hey, I'm in this situation, but I'm, I'm choosing to take this, this kind of posture in it. Mm. Um, that sets me up to, to love well and represent Jesus well in the ways of God. Well, and I'm like, if I can do that in a way that then could, get in other people's ears. Yeah. I think that is going to promote something powerful. And so that's the hope is to, yeah. to stir that kind of, they won't even know that it's the ways of God, hmm. but they'll hear the song and they're like, Ooh, I'm in that situation. And that's what I want to do. That's the heart I want to have. Like, that's what I want it to feel like or sound like, um, in, and, and draw people in, in that way. So that's the heart behind, that. that's the heart behind the project. And so I have a few songs that are kind of written, but but need that but need input. And I'm exploring all sorts of ideas. Like I don't have a name for the project yet. I don't know if I want to release it under my own name because then it will be linked very heavily to Christian worship. Um, and or if I come up with a new name and release it differently, but then I don't carry over my listeners from. You know, I have lots of listeners that have listened to my previous project. Yeah. So I'm navigating a lot of those kind of things now. I think it could work under your name for cool. sure. I don't know. I I have found 
that people are just open to if they like the music they're open you know they're open yeah. to you who are you as a person mm-hmm. you know and um i i have found recently in shows the more forthcoming i am with who i am without you know saying you all have to believe the same thing mm-hmm. you know people have been so receptive so anyways i would be really curious to hear the next record as a jeff yeah cool. record uh i mean do you want to work on one of them yeah Let's oh, yeah. do that. Yeah, so that that's one of the things I want to do with this pro, with this interview project is, uh, I mean, it's always great to to find out more about a great writer and and hear what makes them tick. But the challenge with these songwriting interviews is like, how how can they be helpful? And what can we add to this already super saturated space? Can we do a co write on camera or can we uh, workshop a song on camera? And so, honestly, the answer to that is we don't know. <laughs> right, yeah. We might... Maybe there's a reason other people aren't doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah we <laughs> yeah. can't, you know, oh, yeah. no one's thought of this before. Yeah. We're going to workshop a song a little bit, see if, like, maybe any input I give Jeff or vice versa could be helpful in the writing process to you. And if we decide it's worth broadcasting, we will. And if it's not, then we'll just cut it off. Interview and here. Right here. <laughs> Dude, thanks so much for at least, you know, this first section. That felt like a success. Um, and, uh, you know, let's work on a song. Yeah. And what I love about this is, um, Kevin, you are you are pretty good at a lot of the different aspects of songwriting. And not only that, you've got a production side in addition, uh, which gives you a unique voice. So the reason I'm excited about this and excited for other people to kind of hear this this content is that like they can see behind the scenes kind of what it takes and what you're good at. And, and I was describing this, I was talking to my wife about this, and I was like, people want to watch Bob Ross paint. Mm. They don't want to just see his painting after and hear about how he did it. Right. Oh <laughs> they want to see him in the process. And so like for me, I wanted people to see I want you know anybody who sees this to, to get to see some of the painting process yeah. you know with 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 some of the messiness and you know maybe we'll find some happy little accidents oh man <laughs> I hope we will I forgot about that you know what a courageous sorry you just you just bob rossed me so is that the that's like the rick roll of <laughs> of art you just bob rossed me wow what a courageous I never got the sense that Bob Ross was worried about the outcome of a painting. Yeah. He just let it unfold and 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 uh, made l- lemonade out of any lemons that, you know, oh my gosh, let's let's Bob Ross this song. Yeah. And God willing it will be something beautiful, you know. So anyways, wow. Oh my, I'm going to be thinking about Bob Ross all day now. All right, good. Uh we're going to cut and take a quick break and then come back Uh, with music sweet 